Beneath the dry sands of what is now Pakistan and northwest India lies the ghost of a civilization that once pulsed with life. Streets paved in perfect symmetry, houses with indoor plumbing, massive granaries, but no kings, no temples, no clear signs of warfare, just silence. The Indus Valley Civilization, lost to time, erased by the desert, and spoken of only in broken seals and buried bricks. Over 4,000 years ago, it thrived alongside ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. Yet unlike them, it left behind no decipherable script, no grand tombs, and no legends that survived. Who were these people? Where did they come from? And why did they vanish? For centuries, scholars debated wildly. Were they native to South Asia? Migrants from Iran? Proto-Dravidians? Or perhaps even related to mysterious populations from Central Asia? The ruins whispered no answers. The language, still unread. The origins, a riddle tangled in time. But now, a buried clue has finally surfaced. Ancient DNA extracted from a long-forgotten skeleton found in a prehistoric cemetery at Rakigari, is about to shatter everything we thought we knew. Could this be the key to one of humanity's oldest unsolved mysteries? Could DNA reveal the true origin of the Indus people? At its height, the Indus Valley civilization stretched across more than one million square kilometers making it one of the largest civilizations of the ancient world. It flourished around 2600 BCE, with major urban centers like Mohenjo-Daro, Harappa, and Dolavira boasting remarkable engineering. Grid-planned cities, complex drainage systems, multi-story homes, and evidence of sophisticated trade networks. Yet, unlike Egypt or Sumer, there are no giant statues. No carved propaganda, no ruling dynasties etched in stone. Its people built in silence. They thrived, and then they disappeared. When British archaeologists first stumbled upon Harappa in the 1920s, they were stunned. The bricks, the precision, the order, none of it matched what they expected from primitive Bronze Age cultures. And yet, no Rosetta Stone emerged. No written records survived. Just thousands of tiny seals with enigmatic symbols and ruins that refused to speak. The mystery deepened as scholars tried to trace their roots. Were they descendants of earlier farming cultures in South Asia? Or migrants linked to the Elamites of Iran? Or even Mesopotamian traders? For decades, all answers were speculative, based on pottery, architecture, and trade artifacts. No human remains with usable DNA had ever been found. Until now, one skeleton in one grave may rewrite the story of an entire civilization. In 2012, under the blazing sun of northern India, a team of archaeologists unearthed something extraordinary at the ancient site of Rakigari one of the largest known cities of the Indus Valley Civilization. Among scattered pottery shards and mud-brick ruins, they found a burial site, and inside it, the nearly intact skeleton of a woman laid gently in the ground over 4,500 years ago. Her bones were fragile, her grave simple, but what she carried within her was invaluable. Preserved genetic material. DNA untouched for millennia. It was the first time researchers had uncovered a skeleton from the Indus Valley with viable ancient DNA. Until that moment, all attempts had failed. Heat, humidity, and time had destroyed every sample. But here, in this silent grave, science found a whisper from the past. The excavation team knew the implications immediately. If the DNA could be sequenced, it could finally answer the most haunting question. Who were the Indus people? Was this woman a native of South Asia? Was she descended from ancient Iranian farmers? 
Or did her genome carry the echoes of forgotten migrations across the Asian continent? The excavation triggered a new race, not just to understand her, but to decode an entire lost civilization from a single strand of ancient genetic code. The journey from bone to revelation was anything but simple. The team faced immense scientific hurdles. Ancient DNA is fragile, especially in South Asia, where heat and moisture destroy genetic material quickly. The remains from Rakigarhi were rushed to the laboratories of South Korea and India, where cutting-edge techniques in genomic reconstruction were employed. Scientists used high-throughput sequencing and ultra-clean labs to avoid contamination. Analyzing every fragment of DNA extracted from the woman's petrous bone, the densest part of the skull, and often the last to surrender its secrets. Months turned into years as data was gathered, filtered, and compared. The challenge was monumental. Not only was this the first genome from an Indus Valley individual, but researchers had to align it with hundreds of ancient and modern populations, from Iranian Neolithic farmers to steppe pastoralists and South Asian hunter-gatherers. The goal? To find genetic fingerprints, clues hidden deep within the double helix. Meanwhile, political debates flared across borders. The origin of the Indus people was a matter of national pride, academic rivalry, and cultural identity. But the science pressed on. Slowly, a picture began to emerge. It was more complex and more shocking than anyone had predicted. The woman's DNA was about to speak. When the genome was finally decoded, scientists were stunned. The woman from Rakigari showed no genetic trace of steppe ancestry, the very component often associated with Indo-European migrations. Instead, her DNA was a blend of two ancient lineages, early Iranian farmers, and indigenous South Asian hunter-gatherers. This meant that, at least for this individual, and possibly for the entire Indus population, their roots were local, deep, and far older than many had assumed. Even more shocking, her genome lacked any connection to Central Asian pastoralists who later spread across the subcontinent. The implication? The builders of the Indus cities were not outsiders. They were homegrown, emerging from South Asia's earliest agricultural societies. The Indo-European language? It likely arrived centuries later. The discovery turned long-standing theories upside down. It suggested that the Indus people developed urbanism, trade, and written symbols independently, without influence from Mesopotamia or invading cultures. The woman's DNA became a molecular time capsule revealing not only where the Indus people came from, but who they weren't. This single genome, 4,500 years old, had pierced through millennia of silence. And now, the next step was to reconstruct what their civilization may have truly looked and felt like. Beyond the ruins, beyond the myths, with the genetic code finally unraveled, a new vision of the Indus Valley civilization began to take shape. One grounded not in myth or speculation, but in data. These people were not warlords or empire builders. They were artisans, engineers, and traders. In cities like Mohenjo-daro, water flowed through underground drains, public baths offered communal hygiene, standardized weights and measures ensured fairness in commerce. There were no palaces, no weapons caches, no armies, only order, planning, and balance. Their society seemed egalitarian, perhaps even democratic. The DNA revealed a genetically diverse population, indicating robust internal trade and interaction across a vast territory. From Gujarat to the Punjab, their fingerprints were everywhere. Pottery styles, bead-making techniques, even dental practices. They traded with Mesopotamia, but remained culturally distinct. The genetic absence of steppe ancestry told a powerful story. This civilization rose not by conquest, but by continuity. 
layered atop earlier farming cultures that had thrived in the subcontinent for millennia. And then it declined. Around 1900 BCE, the cities emptied. Climate change, shifting rivers, and declining monsoons likely triggered the collapse. But the people did not vanish. Their genes, customs, and technologies migrated east and south, absorbed into future populations. The Indus didn't disappear. They became part of the very fabric of South Asia itself. The mystery of the Indus Valley civilization, a silence that endured for over 4,000 years, has finally begun to speak. Not through deciphered scripts or forgotten monuments, but through the invisible threads of ancient DNA. From a single woman buried in Rakigari, we now know that the Indus people were not strangers or invaders. They were native, innovative, and astonishingly advanced. Their legacy lives on, not just in ruins or relics, but in the bloodlines of millions across South Asia today. Their cities, their systems, their choices, echo in the genetic memory of the subcontinent, and yet countless questions remain. What did their language sound like? What did they believe? Why did they choose order over war, balance over conquest? The genome opened a door, but behind it lies a vast, unexplored world, a civilization that defied expectations, built without kings, ruled without swords, and vanished without a trace. And now, it returns, piece by piece, gene by gene, discovery by discovery. If you were captivated by this story, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Dive deeper into the forgotten corners of history with us. Because sometimes, the past isn't buried. It's waiting.